Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Holidays. And welcome to the first annual Thrifting with the Boys and Worth Point Holiday Hangout. I will be one of your hosts today, Jason Smith from Thrifting with the Boys. And I will be your other host, Brian Goodman from Thrifting with the Boys. And I will be the third host, Christina Capusta from Worth Point Corporation. Don't sound so excited about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with you guys. I'm thrilled to have this be the kickoff to our partnership with Worth Point. And I'm excited to see all of the thrifting that you've done and how you used Worth Point to maximize your holiday season. Great. Well, uh, we've got lots of things to talk about. Um, it's always great to find things to sell at the holiday season. And, uh, Jason will start off showing some stuff, but just remember, it, it, you can sell Christmas stuff all year round, so it's great to look for it all the time. But we'll get more into that, and uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your first item that you have. All right, well, I'm going to lose the hat because it is noisy. It's actually supposed yeah. to be canceling. But I wanted to have something, so here, I got antlers now. Ah, oh, even better. <laughs> there we go. Let me tilt that up a little bit so everybody can see my antlers. There we go. Yeah, as Brian said, I uh, I buy Christmas stuff all year round, or, or holiday stuff in general, uh, because typically you can find it cheaper throughout the year uh, when a thrift store or a vintage store puts out a Christmas item in March. They're not expecting a big demand for it. So buy stuff all year, and uh, now I'm working on my Christmas stuff, and some of the items we're going to show you today were, were good purchases, and some were not so good. So I'm going to start with one that's not so good. So I have this beautiful little uh, children waiting for Santa Claus to drop the gifts off Christmas mug. It is made, it's called Ursula's Christmas, made by Ursula Dodge. And I thought, oh, this, you know, it's a name, looks kind of collectible. And then once I got home and looked it up on Worth Point, one day, found out right away was this actually came as a four mug set with coasters. So here they are with coasters and the four mugs. So I'm like, nah, unless somebody broke their mug, they're probably not going to be as excited to get my singular mug. So I did look at, um, somebody sold a set of two of them from 2011. And for the set of two, oops, I still work on the right screen. They uh, sold for $14.99. So uh, like I said, I could hope somebody broke their one mug, and I'm going to try it at twelve ninety nine. It's not going to be a huge sale, but I only paid fifty cents for it, I think. So it'll still be a profit, and I'll be happy. I'm always happy with a profit. Gotcha. Hey, Jason, do you mind running through how you set that up? So you signed into Worth Point. Oh yeah, sorry. Then... I, guess we I guess we jumped ahead a little bit. <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just thinking maybe for our fans to see how you do it the first time through, then they could get a concept of how to apply it. Sure. Let me uh, let me pretend that we I did not have that one pre set up. I'll hop back over to that screen. Hang on a quick sec. Okay, great. And so here is the uh, Worth Point uh, main page. Once you've logged in, so I've logged in. There's my name, Jason. And what I did was I typed up Ursula's Christmas mug. So Ursula's Christmas mug. Right in the search bar, we have over 176,000 sales records from the largest auction houses, um, and we have all of this aggregated data here so that you could figure out exactly how to search and categorize things um, by minimizing and maximizing the price range and refining your search in any way that you'd want. So go ahead. Yeah, so as Christine was saying, you can do by best match, which is what it is preset to. Uh, you can sort it by, uh, keep clicking on the wrong screen. <laughs> you can sort it by price and by sale day. But I see exactly what I needed right here on the first screen. Here is my, here's two of the mugs from the collection that just sold two years ago for the $14.99. I realized, like I said, not a huge deal. I'm not making a million dollars off of this. I'm not going to retire. I'm not going to sail off into the sunset, but I know. <laughs> Although have a, we wish you would. Uh, <laughs> no, not all of us. <laughs> but now I have a starting point. I'm not going to be wishful thinking and, and, and price it at, say, $30. I see now it was a set, but no big deal. Like I said, I did not spend a lot on it. So I'm cool. I, my research showed exactly what I needed to see, and now I can move on to the next item, which Brian has. All right. The 
I'm going to try to I'll show the shirt first and then I'll show it on WorthPoint and on eBay. Um, I just found this last week. It is oh. <laughs> It's a little hard to see, but it is Snoopy who's resting on top of a doghouse. And peanut stuff typically does well. It's not the type of thing I would look up in the field. I mean, I only paid a buck or two for the shirt. Um, so I just grabbed it. It was a good shape and so forth. Now, if I go to uh, the sh look at this full screen, I'm going to show you. And then I got to, there's, okay. Do you see the uh, worth point? Page now? Nope, we see you. Not yet. <laughs> huh. Well, then I've already screwed this up. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Well, to all of our fans out there, too, uh, you can use WorthPoint on the go. There's a WorthPoint app. So yep. even if you wanted to, you could, you could see this while you're out and about. There, we can see it now, Brian. Right. So when I looked up on Worth Point after I got home, um, again, it's not the type of thing, uh, you know, it's pretty inexpensive uh, risk when you're buying stuff like this. So when I got, I saw that one sold for 13, which tells me I'm going to try for 19.99 because even though there were a few others that were listed currently, it's the time of the season. Um, where these shirts sell, um, I may have the only 2XL available. And because of that, um, my pictures are better, my stuff is better, I ship better. At least that's what I think. Um, so I have a reason to try to ask more. Um, so one of the things is that when you look things up on Worth Point, which I do all the time, I don't necessarily take it to heart that that's all I'm going to get for something. Um, I sometimes want to see, well, what can I do to get a better price? I also examine what the item that sold, uh, maybe the description was bad, maybe the title was bad, maybe there's something about it that I can do better to that would warrant more money. So Actually, Brian, if you go if you go back to the worth point screen, you do have a better title because they forgot one of the most important words in their title. They, right. don't, have, they don't have peanuts in the title. Exactly, and that's an important thing. And uh, and they use an exclamation point, a semicolon, parentheses, and one quote. Right, <laughs> last one. Nobody cares that it's the last one. Uh, nobody's searching for the last one. Right. And uh, you know so. So those are the kinds of things you want to look for. And when I searched for this, I didn't I didn't search Snoopy on his doghouse wake. I put Snoopy wake holidays and bingo. I was able to get a few uh, different ones that came up and easily found this. So um, that's, that's why uh, it works so well. So now I think I handled the controls. I mean, you know, I like to be chauffeured around, and you're making me press buttons and do things. <laughs> okay. So so far, so good. So you're back on the screen. So, uh, so my next item is um, when I was growing up, I packed a little blue suitcase every weekend of my life, and I went over to my grandparents' farm and hung out on the farm for the weekend. And uh, I realize now my parents were just getting me out of the house, but I thought it was <laughs> awesome hanging out with my grandparents every weekend, and my grandmother had these um, cups and plates that we drank out of and ate out of by an artist called M.A. Hadley. And had uh, not been for grandma, I never would have known to buy M.A. Hadley stuff. She made very whimsical items. Here's a, a Christmas tree mug. She always has her name on the bottom. Huh. And typically, here's another one with a handle. Typically, she adds a little something on the inside. Oh, that's cute. So this one says, ho, 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 because it's Christmas. A lot of them will say the end. Uh, so very, very cute stuff. So I had found these two uh, out thrifting one day for a buck a piece. Came home and did a quick search on Worth Point and saw that this exact Santa's Milk one that I have uh, sold in 2008 for $11.03. And, 
Now, as we've said before, if you look at this person's title, all they had is M.A. Hadley, Santa's Milk Cup. And there could be a lot more in here. Christmas, ho, 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 Christmas tree. You get 80 characters in your title, but it's a good start. I know we're going to be at least $11, if not more. And I might put the two together, <clears throat> one with a handle, one without. Uh, somebody uh, who might want to add to their collection, because M.A. Hadley did tons and tons of stuff. So you will find a lot of people who are like, oh, I need the one with the handle, or just the one without the handle, I broke this. Um, but worth point was showing me that um, at least I feel $11. But I'm thinking more like $24.99. Better title, uh, good pictures, uh, and good shipping terms always helps sell your items. Great, and that's a good way to address marks in library because if you have the marking on the bottom, you can look in our marksinlibrary.com account and find out more about you know who had who had made it and um, do some further research as to some key terms to then go back and and, and apply them to WorthPoint to even narrow down the search further. That's another way um, to use WorthPoint. And Brian. All right. Well, I don't think I pulled this tie out, but I'll show you on the uh, big screen here or the little screen, depending upon what you're watching us on. And, okay, now I'm showing you again. I don't understand why. <laughs> but I have this item. It's a uh, Three Stooges tie. Do you see that now? Yes. That's listed on eBay. I've got it up there for $39.99. Even though when I researched it on WorthPoint, one sold a few years back for a little over $10. There's not a lot of these types of ties uh, of a novelty nature. You know, Three Stooges does pretty well. It doesn't always command a $40 price tag. I may end up getting in the $20 to $30 range, maybe $25. But I wasn't going to give this away for $10. I'm willing to wait even a couple of Christmases to sell it closer to my number rather than uh, the other number that I saw here. Which, uh, And again, if you look at the title, it's a very bad title. Um, it just says Stooges Christmas. Now, if somebody is searching for three Stooges Christmas, this may not even come up because it's only showing Stooges Christmas. Um, one thing, a, a very popular manufacturer of, of uh, novelty ties is Ralph Marlin, and you can look that up on WorthPoint. You'll see lots of Ralph Marlin. I bet you if I did a search right now, let's see, copy this, paste, Ralph Marlin, um, you'll get 895 items that they're showing. And, I mean, nobody who's looking for a novelty tie is necessarily going to search for Ralph Marlin. They're going to look for Three Stooges. They're going to look for The Grinch, or they're going to look for, you know, any number. I mean, I've got boxes here of Christmas. Oh, here. i got boxes of Christmas ties. Let's see if I can get out of this. <laughs> um, i got to go to the right screen, hit that button. Now it should be back to me. Look at that. Through the magic of modern television. So, I mean, if somebody's looking for Betty Boop, even though that may be a Ralph Marlin tie, they're not necessarily going to know Ralph Marlin. So it's not a great keyword. But, um, but when I searched uh, uh, Stooges Christmas, I was able to come up with the one on Worth Point that showed it was about 10 bucks. And again, that's just a guide. It's all, you know, it's not concrete. If it had said $100 on there, doesn't mean that I can get $100 for it. It's only a representation of what something it sold for at a certain rate of time. The idea of using WorthPoint is not just to tell you what something is worth, but it's to get good information from the description as to what it's all about, some things you may not have even known about. Also, it's a shortcut. If you're listing something that's unusual and there's only one thing out 
on Worth Point from about five years ago, you may have all the measurements, you may have all the background information on the item, you have everything that's pertinent to it. So use Worth Point not only for a price, because that's not just what it's for. It all encompasses. It gives you pictures so you can verify that you have the right item and so forth. So uh, anyway, I will uh, uh, have Jason go ahead and show us his next item. So my next item was I bought these little Heartland Valley Village people. I went to a little small Christmas village. There wasn't a lot of information on the box. Made in China. UPC, but the UPC was generically used for all their individual little little pieces. So uh, it won't tell me specifically these three. So I went over to Worth Point to see what I could find over there. And I typed in Heartland Valley Village Deluxe Accessory Farmers, because that's what's happening in, in this little threesome. It's a farmer with some sheep, uh, one wrestling a bull, and a farmer wife feeding the chickens. So what I did find... Um, oops, where's my farmers? I did find two sets. Uh, where where did they go? Hang tight. There we go. I found two sets. They were not the exact uh, three farmers, but obviously this was the the whole little village. So these two sets each sold for twelve ninety nine. I didn't think this was going to be an expensive piece, but they were at a little closeout sale for a buck a piece. And I bought like six or seven of them last year. Sold five of them. Still have two left. But I can see, you know, twelve ninety nine, nineteen to nineteen ninety nine would probably be the good price for it. Um, and you know, the best thing, one thing we haven't really talked about is. The best thing about Worth Point is in the listings you're looking up, uh, it has the original description. So it can save you a lot of work and a lot of head scratch. And once you can find it, you're like, oh, cool. Here's all the pertinent information. Uh, the guy's got the measurements and everything else. So <clears throat> it's going to be very easy for us to then make our listings because I can just base it off of what they've said. Obviously, as long as it looks accurate. So that's my little village. It takes a village. <laughs> a village to make a little village. And speaking of villages, we have a thrifting village that we should remind people about. We have a Facebook group that uh, is almost 5,000 members in it, and we help each other thrifting um, with items, what, uh, what you found, and you need help with listing it, researching it. I mean, we... We uh, always go to Worth Point all the time to try to help people, and we uh, we encourage people to use Worth Point on their own to do some research. But we'll help you figure some things out if you're having um, some issues where you're not sure what to look for. But uh, you might want to click on the link on the side of the page there for the Facebook group, uh, Thrifting with the Boys, and. Uh, Try to join our group if you want to share some of your things that you found that we should be on the lookout for, or you need help with listing stuff that you found thrifting. Uh, we're very strict. We have rules. We have regulations. We kick people out if they're not behaving, but we uh, but it's a great village. Um, we never burned anyone at the stake in our village, but you know it's a uh, yeah. but it's it's it, yet <laughs> it's a, but. Um, you bet the best thing to do um, if you do want to join the group uh, drop us an email at Brian and Jason at thrifting with the boys com and say hey I, I saw the worth point uh, webinar about your Christmas stuff and would really like to be a member of your uh, Facebook group I put my name on the list because there is a waiting list to get in and we'll get to it as soon as possible it makes it easier if you send us an email and tell us uh, a little bit about what you thrift and why you'd like to join. But um, yeah, and on that note, we um, Worth Point has a Facebook page as well. We also have a Pinterest page, and we also uh, post all of the new the articles that Jason and Brian write for us. So it's a very 
mutually beneficial relationship for us both because Brian and Jason put a great face for Worth Point and we just wanted to <laughs> we wanted to ex exemplify that here with this webinar um, we have a great start to our relationship it's it's been, we've been together now for a year and um, we're looking forward to more videos coming out, more articles, more interaction on both their Facebook group page and our public page as well. Um, and if you have any questions regarding your WorthPoint account, I would highly uh, encourage you to sign up using WorthPoint using the Thrifting with the Boys code, which is TWTB. 2013 and um, that will reduce the price of your WorthPoint um, monthly subscription cost to $12.99 per month. Um, and then if you have any questions about your WorthPoint account or about how to see the boys um, following them and getting to know them, you can contact us at our help desk line, um, which is on the site WorthPoint.com. Operators are standing by. <laughs> And I'm so sorry, this is the face of WorthPoint now. Yeah. You know, we're thrilled to have these two. These and, two you're the, uh, and you're the pretty one. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that, that's, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. All right, you got another item there, Bri? Yeah, I think I got something else. Uh, this was, and I don't physically have it because it just sold a week or so ago. Nice. Uh, I've got to... Uh, Hit the right button, hit this button, then hit this button, and hit this button. Okay. This was a uh, a little nutcracker by uh, Kurt Adler. They go for some decent money. Um, I only got 20 bucks for this one, but uh, oh, wrong one. But, I mean, others have gone for $25, as my research shows me on worth point but the uh, the one that I had was cracked no pun intended the, the, <laughs> the, arm, the arm was split so there were some issues with it and I was thrilled to get 20 bucks for it because I only paid a buck or so uh, at the thrift store for it without realizing it was cracked but um, it's probably one of those things Jason that uh, I, I probably broke myself um, I'm, prone, <laughs> I'm prone to do that but, um, yeah, so, I mean, it, it, this time of year, it's always great to uh, uh, to list this type of thing. And I don't know if I can show. Oh, there's the crack. Nice. Uh, so, um, and that's an important thing, too. When you do have something that is not all it's cracked up to be, <laughs> you, you want to you make sure that you... Point it out. You make it very clear in the listing that uh, you know it does have a flaw. It does have a, a chip, a crack, a blemish, a stain, a smudge, whatever it is. Make sure you point it out. And eBay actually has made it real easy now, and they encourage you to enter something called a condition description, and that shows up right near the price. So if you say uh, you know cracked or uh, dinged or scratched or whatever you can write actually you can write a lot of words but you can just write a couple of words to say you know please note the uh, tear on the sleeve or whatever it might be so uh, I strongly urge you to do that and you also want to take that into consideration when you research things on worth point if you come up with an item and you see three or four of them and the prices are uh, really far apart Maybe it's the condition, so you want to dig a little bit deeper and read the description in there, and maybe it says, you know, missing a piece or, um, you know, the, the leg is lopsided or whatever it might be. You want to make sure that uh, uh, when you're doing your analysis of what to price your similar item for, that you uh, study why there might be differences. Sometimes it's only the keywords used in the title, but other times it can be the condition. So, uh, anyway. Yeah, that's a great point. Good. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't think about that. I mean, you know, I I I use it often, and I 
I do need to read more detail into it because it could be worth a lot more or a lot less comparatively. It's well, a rather cool. It, it, exactly. You want to you wanna not spend a ton of time researching these things, but you want to do some, you know, some due diligence and understanding why something only when you're disappointed and what a price brought maybe you got to dig a little bit deeper and see well gee mine is brand new pristine in the box that I found and this was a piece of junk that had been run over by a you know a bulldozer right. and that's why they only got ten dollars and I think this thing's worth a hundred so anyway that's that's where we're at and Jason you have another item on the board and actually, it works out. Nice segue, Brian, because I want to hey. talk about uh, uh, item I have that's not in the box, but the two I found on WorthPoint had the box. So every year, J.C. Penny comes out with a little snow globe with Mickey <laughs> in it, and then they put the year on. Now, the older one, the older you can find, the more money you'll make. Now, this is from three years ago. They do sell a ton of them, but people still collect them. And obviously, once the year is gone, so is that one. Um, so what I wanted to check on WorthPoint, what I, what they were selling for. Here's one that sold about a week, or actually a week before Christmas last year, for uh, only twelve fifty. But it did have the box with it, so I don't have the box. Uh, but luckily, I found another one that sold in April of this year. Now, who's looking for Christmas stuff in April? I'm not sure. Yeah. But the price went up a little bit, so sixteen bucks. So I think the further we march away from that year, the more expensive it's going to get. Now, I don't think this is going to be worth a hundred dollars today, but I'm going to put it up for like nineteen ninety nine or twenty four ninety nine. Because I did see an increase in price over a uh, four-month period or five-month period, so that was that's a great way to use WorthPoint to see that hey, there, this arc is going up, and now we're in that sweet spot. It is the holiday time, time to sell these. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna get this up today, and I actually have a couple of these, and I always find them, and you can find them in thrift stores all the time, but they think um, they're not that exciting. So you typically find them for only a dollar or two, and if you can find the ones from early 2000, you will uh, those will sell for upwards of like forty dollars. That's awesome. And so obviously, e oh, sorry, amazing. obviously easy to ship too. Not a lot to this. You right, know, right. Cool. It's tiny. Right. That's what I was just going to ask you. It was fairly small and easy to ship because I saw a, a really wonderful snow globe. That was very, very heavy. It was huge, and it moved. And I said, you know what? I could, I could probably sell this thing and make a few bucks, but it wasn't. It was so heavy. It was going to be so expensive to ship that between uh, it breaking, I, I wasn't making enough money. <laughs> I said, pass. So yeah. anyway, good. That was a nice one. What you got there, homie? All right. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing a tie, a nice menorah Hanukkah tie. That's currently listed on eBay if you do a search on that. But anyway. Wait, you uh, can buy the tie from our Google Hangout? Absolutely. And, if, and order before midnight tonight, too. <laughs> All right. This was a, uh, it still is, a Tim Burton <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas tie kind of unusual and it was one of these things that uh, let's see shows up as being sold on worth point for fifteen dollars seven, seven years ago that's the great thing about worth point is you can find things that are really old um, in terms of years so your research can be very extensive on something that you're not going to find every day. Um, but the title is not that great. And uh, so I, uh, I'm going to be getting this listed. I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to shoot for around $30, $40, somewhere in that range and see if I can get that, uh, that amount for uh, for that tie. Um, again, this is an old listing, um, but it does have some information in here that I can use to help my listing. Um, so let's see. I go back here. I press this button. And, oh, wow. Okay, so now that was the tie. It's like I'm doing a hangout with my mom. 
<laughs> Where am I? I don't see my <laughs> Hey, we pull back the curtain. We, you know, we're honest and open with everything. I mean, we we show things. I mean, uh, I can't tell you how many times in the last week alone, Jason has said in our Facebook group how he's made a mistake buying a certain thing, or shouldn't have bought this, or shouldn't have bought that. I mean, we don't. We want to be upfront and be helpful to everybody. I mean, it's you know, we we show the good and the bad. I mean, you make mistakes at times, and. Uh, you buy something, and that's one of the reasons why we recommend WorthPoint is it helps to minimize those mistakes. When you're out in the field and you go on to WorthPoint and you see something that you like and you think it's great, and you pull up WorthPoint and there's 500 of the item and they all sold for low money, probably not a good thing. If there's only one of them or two of them, maybe, even if it's for low money, maybe you can do something better to sell it for more money. Okay. So it's WorthPoint is a great tool not only to help you know what to buy, but also helps you know what not to buy. Exactly, and that was um that was one of our our CEO's biggest initiatives is, you know he's a he's a seller himself and got it. No, I don't know why, but the, usually the flies, I get a fly every now and then. And it goes They're getting right in the holiday the spirit. It goes right to the window, and I usually can get it there. But this one doesn't want to go to the window. I don't know. Well, but, well, I mean, yeah, it's it's helpful to know what's going to sell and what's not going to sell, so that you know not to waste the time, and you can weigh out your shipping costs um, versus the sale price. And I mean, it's a really great tool, and and our app is really wonderful. So. I'm glad. I'm so glad that this is going well because I hope that people are learning a lot and get to have good exposure to a real hands-on experience um, into using it. I mean, it, it, it's easy. You know, twenty dollars saved uh, once a week while you're out thrifting can add up to a thousand dollars a year that you didn't waste on things that weren't necessary to buy that were either going to be slow sellers or not sell at all. So. Uh, um, it, it's a great tool to use to help you save money as well as evaluate value. Absolutely. It's getting a perfect segue because the item I'm going to talk about is a huge, huge mistake that if I would have used WorthPoint in the field, I would have saved myself $30. Oh, okay. So I bought this Tom and Jerry punch bowl and glass it. I, I was I was with you, and you were so excited about that. Oh, I know. And, uh, <laughs> like it's a punch bowl. Thirty-two dollars. Okay. Here's the cups that go with it. Cute. Um, and then most people know Tom and Jerry as a cat and a mouse, but Tom and Jerry is a uh, basically a warm eggnog. Now I can't stand eggnog anyway, so I can't even Whoa. fathom warm eggnog. Ugh. Yeah. But, I don't like the name eggnog. It just is. Uh... There we go. But you know, this was it's vintage. It's Fire King, which is a good brand. Yeah. And it was the bowl in six cups, and I'm thinking, oh, this is an easy hundred dollars. I'll spend thirty bucks, no big deal. And then when I got home and did some research, I was like, oh, whoops. So <laughs> here's one from 2011 that had eight cups, nine cups, and only sold for fifteen dollars. Oh, no. Yes, and that's very indicative of this piece. For whatever reason, people really don't care. Now, of course, this did sell in May of 2011. 2011. But, but if you look them up, and you'll see tons on WorthPoint, they're all in the $15 to $20 range, which to ship a glass bowl and six, glass, six breakable cups is not worth my time or my effort. Absolutely. So to minimize my loss and... Uh, this is a lucky thing that Brian and I have at our disposal. We also have a booth at an antique mall here in Vegas. The antique mall is called Sin City Pickers. And it's on Wyoming, right by Main Street. We're right behind the stratosphere. And this is the kind of piece that somebody like myself won't like <laughs> picking up in person because maybe they're having a uh, get-together this holiday, and this is a great set. I'm going to try it at 50 bucks. I will settle for 30 just to break even. Now, had I, you know, had I, we were, Brian and I were rushing, and we were trying to get finished. We were in Phoenix, uh, Antiquing and Thrifting. And had I taken time to look it up, I would have left it behind. So wow. sometimes, sometimes you fail. 
And now it's what you do with that fail. So if I can get it to the mall, get make make a couple of bucks, I'll be happy because I don't want to deal with shipping it. Because I'm going to lose money anyway, so try not to lose money and also have to ship. That would stink. All right. Santa Claus with Tabasco. Wow. All right. You think it's a real big winner, but, hey, you know, not everything is uh, is a big winner. It'll be okay. Um, where am I? Let's see. This is not the exact same tie, but it's a similar one. And it's gone for twelve ninety nine a couple of years ago. That's probably all this is worth. I only paid a couple bucks for it, but um, one of the great things with ties and, and, and other items as well is that you can't be so focused that you have to find the very exact one to do an analysis. I. I did a search. I couldn't find this this exact tie, but I did. I just put in Tabasco and Santa and tie, and I came up with this one. And this is close enough to give me an idea about the value. Um, even even without looking it up on WorthPoint, my you know my guess is a tie like this is in the ten to twenty dollar range. Not a huge seller. I don't know, you know, who's thinking of spiking. Maybe they want to spike their eggnog with uh, Tabasco. I don't know. Or the Tom and Jerry, if you will. Yeah, or the Tom and Jerry. <laughs> but but did, uh, Brian, did you notice the big mistake in this listing? Yeah, they misspelled Santa Claus. Yeah, it helps to spell Santa Claus properly to get proper exposure. There is no E in Claus. He is not part of a contract. Right, and, you know, you bring up a good point that um, a lot of times you'll, you'll stumble on uh, sales for things that do have misspelled words. And one of the things you got to realize is that if the item sold and it was misspelled, then the audience that bought it was even smaller than what you should be looking for. So if only five people misspell the word, there may be 500 who are searching who are spelling it the right way. And those may be the people you want to attract. So sometimes that warrants putting it up at a higher price. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of trying to get the most money because you, you want to uh, put better keywords and, and so forth, better pictures, and using the knowledge that you get from WorthPoint to give yourself some good background information in the description if necessary. I mean, you don't want to write a whole novel, but you want to be able to get the right, um, you know, the age of an item, the uh, sizes. Anything else that's pertinent, with the, don't put a whole big, uh, long litany of things that people have to go through. Remember that um, just like Jason and I research things out in the field, a lot of people are buying things while they're out in the field. They're buying things when they're out in and, and shopping. I was I was actually at a, a toy store yesterday, not a thrift store. And I saw a grandmother with two young uh, grandchildren with her, and they were looking at a toy, a keyboard or something, and the kid was taking his phone out and scanning it. <laughs> he was trying to find a better price, and the grandmother's coaching him to find a better price for it. Oh, my God. It's a whole new world. People are buying things online even while they're out shopping. So whether you're at a flea market or a... a thrift store, a yard sale, um, it's great to be able to uh, look up and get an idea about what to buy and what what uh, what you may have to offer for something. And uh, WorthPoint gives you the ammunition to uh, make reasonable offers on things when you're out buying. So. Yeah, and from the other standpoint, it's good if you're selling as well because you can be there and you could say, no, look, this is really how much it's for, and you could show them right there on your phone. I've been to a bunch of antique sales and um, shows, and I've done the same thing. I'm like, you know, if you had this and showed your customers, you could validate your listing price right there. Exactly. Good. Jason, you got something else? Oh, I, got a, I got a couple things. Yeah. 
So I have uh, this puzzle by uh, Gary Patterson, and this is not my thoughts. This is Gary's website. Uh, Gary's America's most popular illustrator of cats, dogs, golf, and more. And I've seen his work before, and I thought this was cute. This was is called uh, Ski Lover. It's a guy uh, passed out in front of the uh, fireplace holding his skis. Yeah. After probably a hard day of skiing. Um, yeah, we, the only picture of you like that is after a hard day of drinking rum. Yeah. <laughs> True. Um, and I thought this looked a little bit older. I don't know if it's specifically vintage. Um, and I thought it would be a, a big seller. I only paid uh, a dollar ninety nine. Uh, but when I went over to uh, Worth Point, I found I found a bunch of them actually, so I could really base my price uh, on the average from different years. Uh, this one sold in 2008 for 15.99, and this one sold in January of this year for 11.69. So within that same range, I was actually thinking this would be a way more expensive puzzle, um, <clears throat> but I only paid two bucks, so I'll, I'll still get it sold. But now I know. To be realistic, I'm going to keep it uh, under the $25 mark because that's obviously the going rate for it. So there's no point in wasting time and listing spots for this crazy amount that I thought it would bring once I've done my research. Mm -hmm. uh, whose phone was that? Sorry. Actually, Whoa. that was my dad trying to Skype in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another thing I want to show is an ashtray. No, it's a candy dish. Oh, that's cute. And it is um, the brand is House H O U Z E, and you you typically find the glasses quite a bit. There was a glass set that went with this. I happen to find the candy dish. And they called it a bowl, uh, 11.99, sold in 2010. I really think it was marketed to be a candy dish, not specifically a bowl. So, uh, but I'm going to use uh, their information. They've got the measurements already for me, and just bump up the price and use the appropriate keywords. One and thing, if you, if you click on those, the number three, it'll show the other pictures, right? Yep. Sorry yeah. about that. We haven't shown that yet. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So there's the first picture they had in the listing. There's a nice close-up of the brand name. Nice. And an even closer close-up of the brand. <laughs> uh, you know, and when I when I list mine, I will do that front picture. I'll do a close-up of the brand name. But you know, pictures sell the item. So I'll also do a back shot, and I'm gonna do a shot of it sitting like this, so you can really see the contour of this. It kind of gets lost because they just did the shots like this. Um, but one of the things we like to tell people is, so you buy something that is not as exciting or as va valuable as you thought, like my Gary Patterson puzzle. Sometimes you got to sell the, sell the sizzle and we don't have the steak. So I'm going to make it the most attractive by having the best shipping terms, the best return policy, the best title. Uh, I'm going to do the best pictures. I'm going to give uh, alternate angles. You know, on a box of a puzzle, you can't get too many angles. But when I'm selling mugs, you're going to see all four sides. You're going to see in the mug. You're going to see the bottom of the mug. So you want to give people that feeling that they know exactly what's going to show up in, at their house. Yes. They're not going to be surprised. They're not going to think this is a giant one. <laughs> right. and, and Wouldn't that, that be also, so disappointing? <laughs> oh yeah. And that helps minimize questions. Because when you just put one picture of something, um, inevitably, somebody's going to ask you, "Well, what does the back say, or what does this say?" You, you know, you're able to give somebody all the information that uh, when you wake up in the morning and it's three o'clock your time, um, and somebody else decided to buy it, they didn't have to ask anything. They knew everything about the item because you did the research, you did the pictures, you put all the information and sizes in your listing. So uh, that's an important thing. Um, I have an unusual item just found the other day. Unusual for me because I'm not typically one to get Christmas trees or whatever, but this is a ceramic Christmas tree. I'm only holding the top half of three halves of it, or three, not three halves. <laughs> one third. <laughs> one third. <laughs> each, 
I didn't say I was good at math, you know. <laughs> so one third of it, which is the top half. <laughs> Anyway, this this thing is incomplete because there's supposed to be these lights that go in it, um, oh. holes. Just they're like bulbs, but they you don't. But the light comes up underneath. Um, so this is the the second third, and okay. it says Atlantic Mole. And paid about fifteen bucks for this. And this is this is the bottom. So that's where you put the bulb. So I got to get a bulb and plug it in and test it. And, um, and it's kind of, kind of a silvery green color. This one. And doing my research, found a lot of them on Worth Point. Not necessarily this exact same one, but close to it. And let me hit the screen share button. There we go. Do that and start screen share and go to fade to black. No, we don't fade to black. <laughs> um, that's the Tabasco. That's that's me. That's you. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't know where did it go. I just had it. Oh, there it is. Oh wow. Vintage Atlantic Mold Ceramic Christmas Tree. Booyah. Uh, and in, as I was mentioning before about digging a little deeper, um, in here it says base of the tree has minor chipping, which does not affect tree stability. Well, well, this thing has a couple of minor chips in it, so and it still went for a lot of money. Yeah. Um, in 2013, too. Right. This was earlier this year, after Christmas. Interesting. And, and so, I mean, it's it's quite amazing. I don't know if if it's a, the exact one, but it is so close. The base is very close. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't think I don't think I'm going to get two sixty five for it, but I'm certainly going to try to get it closer to two hundred dollars for it. Um, and certainly with more description than just vintage Atlantic mold ceramic Christmas tree. One other thing I might do to uh, sell this item would be to uh, take a video of it. Even though it doesn't physically move, um, I, can, I can do things on video like uh, take it apart and show the different pieces, show all three pieces the first third, the second third, and the third third, and I can uh, also show how the light works or and lights it up and so forth, turn it off and on. I can show it that way. So that's the kind of thing that uh, would warrant a video. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a full-length feature. You know, it's uh, uh, a couple of minutes at most. I mean, maybe a minute or so, just showing how it comes apart and how it lights up. So uh, there's a lot you can. Thought you could do, but man, it it was great having Worth Point because again, I I was a little apprehensive because it was a little heavy to spend fifteen dollars on something that had a couple of little chips on it. But when I saw some of the prices when I was out shopping, I was like, whoa, thank you, Worth Point. I think I'll <laughs> give this. A, it, it it seemed like a reasonable risk. So uh, anyway, what do you got next, Jason? And once again, beautiful segues, because my thing lights up, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I got, I got this light thing. here. It's a, it was from a bar, someplace where they had ski races. NASTAR is the uh, is the acronym for National Standard Race for, uh, like, slalom. So this would hang in a bar wherever they were at a uh, ski resort. So cool. I found this Five bucks, and I wasn't. I thought it was cool. Uh, I could definitely tell it was old. The back says June first, nineteen eighty four, and okay. I found one on <clears throat> Worth Point from nineteen eighty three. Not the listing, obviously, but uh, an older sign. But what was great was he gave me all the information about NASTAR and how the beer company that had to drop out and how Miller Lite filled in. So I'm like, oh, cool. There's nice. information for me, but 
as Brian was talking about adding video to his, the one thing most people make a mistake on when they list anything that lights up is here's the four pictures that this seller had. So the first shot would typically be by first shot. Uh, the second shot is almost the exact same. Third shot is a close-up of where, you know, it says it's Miller Brewing 1983. And then the back shot. Now, mm -hmm. what are they missing? They're missing the shot of it lit up. So right? anything that you have that lights up, you want to go someplace dark and just take a picture of it lit up so people can actually see it live and in action. And I always sell items for more money than somebody else who has the exact same item, even in better condition, if they didn't take that picture of it lighting up because you can't see it working. I'm going to show you how it works. I do the same thing with glow-in-the-dark T-shirts. Every glow-in-the-dark T-shirt I sell, I get it glowing in the closet and set my camera so I can take a picture of it glowing, and I add that to the listing. So you can actually see your item in, in use. And that's what people forget. So based on this $24.99 price, I'm going to do my shot of it lit up. And I'm going to bump up my price at least to 40 bucks, if not 50 And that little bit will, will change people's uh, buying. If they're looking at two of the same thing, and one can see it working and one doesn't show it, yeah. I'm, I'm always going to win that way. Very cool. Great advice. You got anything else, prior? Or? Yeah. Um, basically, I got something to segue probably into what you have next, I'm assuming. I don't know. But um, this is a CD I got in a bunch of stuff. I have no idea. I don't remember third day. They're, they're a religious group. Right, but it's a Christmas offerings. It was sealed. And uh, when I looked it up on uh, Worth Point, um, where was it? 1297 not bad for a 25 cent investment uh, on, a, on a CD. So, and that's a few years ago. So, CDs are great um, to sell at Christmas time. Jason does a, a big tour buying up a lot of Christmas CDs because he knows what to buy. And um, um, I, I just sort of luck into some of the CDs. I, I, know, I know some music. I don't, I'm not real big on Christmas music. Um, but I think uh, it, it certainly can be a real tight window of opportunity where Christmas CDs sell very well at this time of year. So, And that's one great benefit of joining their group as well because they are very smart people. Everyone in their group has something interesting and unique that they specialize in and they'll tell you if it's worth something or absolutely nothing and that's an invaluable free service that their group offers. Absolutely and yeah so our group coupled with Worth Point you really can't go wrong. Yeah. You'd be hard pressed to stump both Worth Point and Thrift. <laughs> good team. <laughs> absolutely but yeah good once again Brian these segues it's like we plan them but we never plan anything. <laughs> 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 Brian and I are the kings of winging it, but it always works out for us. So, yeah, um, I buy tons of Christmas CDs every year. I, I bought about 350 last year, <clears throat> mostly rare, mostly worth lots of money. And like I, we said earlier, if you pick stuff up throughout the year, you will uh, find them cheaper. And even though people, and I do the same, people list and sell Christmas items all year, the one item where you definitely get that bump if you wait is Christmas music. I find that if I sold CD, the same CD in May as opposed to the window, and the window is the last two weeks of November and the first 10 days of December. That's the hot window for Christmas music. I find if you sell in that time frame, you're looking at a 20 to 40% bump, and you hope to hit that arc right as people are starting to buy a lot, and then when somebody needs a specific CD, you're the only one left. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can charge a premium. Okay. <clears throat> So here's one I found recently. Try and guess so you don't see the glare. Oh, I think I have that one. So yeah, yeah, everybody had a very special Christmas. They either had it on LP or CD, but this is a very special version of it. It's by a company called Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs, and what they did is they made gold CDs. So it's a very special, a very special case where the CD starts to pop. Oh with wow! And the CDs themselves are gold. That is so cool. 
these are worth a lot more than your average. So this CD, this CD normally is probably a four dollar CD, five dollar CD. But the gold version, let's hop over to WorthPoint and see what we can find on WorthPoint, shall we? Yes, we shall. We shall. So we'll put in a well. Look at that; it's already there since I searched it. So we'll go very special Christmas, and you will see how many show up. So I put in a very special Christmas. MFSL, which is Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs, but that's how people write it out, and CD. So here's just tons of them. So I'll grab the first one from 2011. James, and... we can't see it. Can you, Brian? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, oh, now I see it. Sorry. <laughs> so this one from 2011 sold for 63. Whoa. This one from 2011. Sold for 101. Oh my God, that's incredible. Uh, this one from 2011 sold for 102. So I'm I'm gonna say based on just those first three checks that I'm gonna be in the neighborhood of 100 dollars, and I paid 15 for this. Which, although we all want to find the dollar and 50 cent items, sometimes it does not hurt to spend money. So I I don't mind spending 15, knowing that at Christmas I'm gonna sell it for at least a hundred bucks. Exactly. So cool. And I, I yeah. routinely buy $50, $50 CDs that I know are worth 150, 200. I've sold CDs up to $500. You got to be lucky and you got to find the rares for the rare, but it can be done even in this day and age with downloading. People are still collectors. They still want to hold this and add it to their collection. Yeah. Great. And it's amazing. I mean, you sell one item, one great item, that'll pay for your WorthPoint subscription for the whole year. So, you know, the cost, I have heard, you know, is, is a bit high, but the value added is, is incredible. So the more you use it, the more benefit you get out of it. I think it's proven here. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing that you can use WorthPoint for, uh, which brings great value, is before you even go out shopping, you can start doing some research on things you're going to be looking for. For example, you see on uh, on Craigslist a listing for a garage sale that has certain items in it. You mm -hmm. might be able to start looking those up ahead of time and decide that, gee, I thought those Bradford Exchange plates were going to be worth a lot of money, but the ones I'm looking up aren't really worth anything. I'm not going to bother going to that particular place. Um, you know, you can, or you might stumble across some things that, uh, that are worth a lot of money. So it really is an invaluable tool uh, to help you find what you're looking for. Um, you've got over a billion images alone on WorthPoint. I mean, that's a, an incredible amount of pictures that are available for your researching. Um, and, I mean, you have uh, great access to all that stuff. And it's, a, it's an amazing tool to be able to narrow down and look for certain things. And uh, I'm always amazed that even just casually looking around WorthPoint, not even something specific, the things you bump into, the things you say, that's worth that much? I didn't know that. I'm going to start looking for that. You, know, you put it in the back of your head and you keep it in your uh, repertoire of things to look for. Um, it could be great motivation and inspiration about what to what to find and what to be on the lookout for. As we, or as we say in our Thrifting with the Boys group, BOLO, be on lookout. So, <laughs> so, um, so we, we sell you... The best bolo uh, is worth point. I mean, be on the lookout for it because it gives you great information to help make you money, and uh, and that's what it's all about. I mean, if you're selling online and you're selling unusual items, as you can see from uh, what Jason and I have shown so far today, it's not just you know antiques or vin you know specifically vintage. We find, you know, some mundane things that can make you money, like, you know, T-shirts or ties or things of that nature. So as well as the unusual uh, antique or oddity. So uh, uh, it, it really covers the whole spectrum of different types of items that it can be helpful for. You got anything else, Jason? Yeah, I got one more item that we found on that same trip to Phoenix, but this one was a much better score than the Tom and Jerry Bowl. 
That was my big. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Now, we, we, I don't know if you remember, we found this for. Uh, oh yeah. Found that for four ninety nine. Okay. And uh, you know, we don't serve cranberry logs too often nowadays, so I know it was vintage. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna open the box here, and the spoon was still in its original uh, plastic. Okay. Hermetically sealed. Yep. A nice crystal dish. Ooh. So Very. just, uh, and, and it, there wasn't a lot of information on this box. You know, it's old. There's no barcode. It just says cranberry said crystal, and that's it. I mean, there is nothing. So just putting those words in over at uh, Fourth Point, I got all the rest of the information I needed because there it is. So they sold it two years ago for $30. Uh, have that they got the brand there, Sheffield, which I, I'm guessing is on the spoon if I looked a little closer. Okay. But sometimes I'm lazy, so uh, it was nice to see the information right here, and now I know what I'm looking for, or now I know what I'm looking to sell it for, so I'll be in that 30, 30 to $40 range because, hey, there's always inflation. Uh, mm -hmm. And they took some nice pictures. However, I would have taken this one on a darker background. The white will make it kind of disappear, but something a little darker will make it pop a little better. Yeah. But see, they were smart, though. They did, they did take the bottom picture because you're never going to know what somebody wants. When you think, who's going to care about the bottom of this dish, that's going to be the first question you get. Hey, can I see the bottom of that dish? Mm -hmm. so don't make your customers have to come to you and ask you. Give them all the information ahead of time. Make it easy for them to buy something from you. Yeah. That you looks know? to be probably from the early 70s, late 60s. Um, I'm, I'm judging from the way the box is. I used to, believe it or not, I used to work in a gift department of a uh, of a department store, similar to a Target or something, and that, that type of thing was really common. You know, they would have, you know, for gifts, for wedding gifts and so forth. That's sort of the age that it looks like in that in that realm. But and, yeah, uh, nowadays somebody having a retro Christmas or vintage Christmas party, that would be a great item to bring as a gift or to the host. Uh, because it's never been used, it's still fresh in the box, and the box is in great shape. And I think Brian's right. Yeah, it's probably 70s, so we're talking 40 years old, and uh, it's in great shape. So of course, I'm definitely going to highlight that too when I list it. How well, how pristine the box is. And it's a great Thanksgiving item, you know. Yeah, a, yeah, true. I'm going to get that up right away, actually. So yeah, you you, you might uh, you might have a quick sale on that. Yeah, so that's. Um, I think that's it for, uh, you don't have anything else, do you, Brian? Let me check. Okay. No, nope, nothing else. <laughs> you, you, know what, you know what happens every time you hear a bell ring? Yes. An a angel gets its wings. No, a thrifter just found a score. Yay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for letting me represent Worth Point and for having the first look into our partnership and all of the benefits for us both. Um, and as a recap again, please sign up through worthpoint.com with their TWTB 2013 code for a discount on the monthly subscription and follow uh, WorthPoint on WorthPoint Facebook as well as WorthPoint on Pinterest because I take all of their items on eBay and pin them through Pinterest so you can also have additional exposure um, of examples that have been found and then um, you know keep keep us in mind with our newsletter if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter go through and um, try our seven day free trial there's a way there to subscribe to our newsletter and then you get uh, a chance to try it for seven days and uh, all of the articles will be shot out that they write and that all of our other worthologists write um, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to call our help desk, which is on the worthpoint.com site. Um, and thank you so much for having, you know, me. And, I, you know, we've become great friends, and I've learned so much uh, through you guys already. So it's been a great partnership, and I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to the next video. Oh, yeah, well, we are, too. Go ahead. We'll, we'll definitely be doing more of these, uh, not probably so specific, but, you know, it was our first one. It's that time of year that we were all digging out our Christmas stuff that we hadn't listed yet. So I said, hey, let's do Christmas. But, yeah, I think Worth Point and Thrifting with the Boys is a, is a match, a, a nice match, like peanut butter and jelly. And, yeah, I, I don't like jelly. 
<laughs> peanut butter and fluff? How about, how about bagels? Peanut butter and fluff. Who doesn't one. like peanut butter and fluff? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a better one. No, you're, you're right, Jason. We've got... Uh, we got a lot more information that we're uh, helping you out with, and again, uh, we thank WorthPoint for uh, for all the great information they're able to provide. And uh, come join us at our, our Facebook group if uh, you want to learn more about it, and uh, check out the you know check out WorthPoint for a month or so. Uh, that code that uh, Christina gave out is good through the end of this year, and. Uh, um, gives you a great discount on WorthPoint, and uh, whether you whether you subscribe to WorthPoint or not, come come visit us, and uh, we'll, you know you're welcome to look at WorthPoint. There's a lot of great information you can get on WorthPoint, even if you don't subscribe. So uh, uh, we think it's it's valuable to subscribe, but if you want to uh, just take a look around, you can do that too. So uh, uh, thanks again, uh, Christina, for uh, hopping in here and. Uh, Hanging up the uh, Santa Claus uh, in the background. Vintage. That was very, very festive. Vintage stocking. <laughs> yes, there you go. And and as always, uh, Jason, uh, you can take your antlers off now. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. Happy and, uh, holidays. Happy <laughs> holidays. Bye. 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 From thrifting with the boys. Um by minimizing and maximizing the price range and refining your search in any way that you'd want. So go ahead. Yes, yeah, so as Christine was saying, you can do by best match, which is what it is preset to. Uh, you can sort it by, oh, keep clicking on the wrong screen. You can sort it by price and by sale day. But I see exactly what I needed right here on the first screen. Here is my, here's two of the mugs from the collection that just sold two years ago for the $14.99. I realized, like I said, not a huge deal. I'm not making a million dollars off of this. I'm not going to retire. I'm not going to sail off into the sunset. But I now <laughs> Although we wish you would. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, not all of us. <laughs> but now I have a starting point. I'm not going to be wishful thinking and, and, and price it at, say, $30. I see now it was a set, but no big deal. Like I said, I did not spend a lot on it. So I'm cool. I, my research showed exactly what I needed to see. And now I can move on to the next item, which Brian has. All right. The, I'm going to try to I'll show the shirt first, and then I'll show it on WorthPoint and on eBay. Um, I just found this last week. It is <laughs> 2011. And for the set of two, oops, I'm work on the right screen, they uh, sold for $14.99. So... Uh, like I said, I could hope somebody broke their one mug, and I'm going to try it at $12.99. It's not going to be a huge sale, but I only paid 50 cents for it, I think. So it'll still be a profit, and I'll be happy. I'm always happy with a profit. Gotcha. Hey, Jason, do you mind running through how you set that up? So you signed into WorthPoint. Oh, yeah, sorry. Then... I, guess we I guess we jumped ahead a little bit. <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just thinking maybe for our fans to see how you do it the first time through, then they could get a concept of how to apply it. Sure. Let me uh, let me pretend that we I did not have that one preset up. I'll hop back over to that screen. Hang on a quick sec. Okay, great. And so here is the uh, WorthPoint uh, main page. Once you've logged in, so I've logged in. There's my name, Jason. And what I did was I typed up Ursula's Christmas mug. So Ursula's Christmas mug. Right in the search bar, we have over 176,000 sales records from the largest auction houses, um, and we have all of this aggregated data here so that you could figure out exactly how to search and categorize things. Um. Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Holidays, and welcome to the first annual Thrifting with the Boys and WorthPoint Holiday Hangout. I will be one of your hosts today, Jason Smith from Thrifting with the Boys. And I will be your other host, Brian Goodman from Thrifting with the Boys. And I will be the third host, Christina Capusta from WorthPoint Corporation. Don't sound so excited about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with you guys. I'm thrilled to 
have this be the kickoff to our partnership with Worth Point, and I'm excited to see all of the thrifting that you've done and how you used Worth Point to maximize your holiday season. Great. Well, uh, we've got lots of things to talk about. Um, it's always great to find things to sell at the holiday season. And, uh, Jason will start off showing some stuff, but just remember, it, it, you can sell Christmas stuff all year round, so it's great to look for it all the time. But we'll get more into that, and uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your first item that you have. All right, well, I'm going to lose the hat because it is noisy. It's actually supposed yeah. to be a so I, but I wanted to have something, so here, i got antlers now. Ah, even better. <laughs> there we go. Let me tilt that up a little bit so I can see my antlers. There we go. Yeah, as Brian said, I uh, I buy Christmas stuff all year round, or, or holiday stuff in general, uh, because typically you can find it cheaper throughout the year uh, when a thrift store or a vintage store puts out a Christmas item in March. They're not expecting a big demand for it. So buy stuff all year, and uh, now I'm working on my Christmas stuff, and some of the items we're going to show you today were, were good purchases, and some were not so good. So I'm going to start with one that's not so good. So I have this beautiful little... Uh, Children waiting for Santa Claus to drop the gifts off Christmas mug. It is made, it's called Ursula's Christmas, made by Ursula Dodge. And I thought, oh, this, you know, it's a name, looks kind of collectible. And then once I got home and looked it up on Worth Point, what I found out right away was this actually came as a four mug set with coasters. So here they are with coasters and the four mugs. So I'm like, eh. Unless somebody broke their mug, they're probably not going to be as excited to get my singular mug. So I did look at, um, somebody sold a set of two of them from two. <laughs> it's a little hard to see, but it is Snoopy, who's resting on top of a doghouse. And peanut stuff typically does well. It's not the type of thing I would look up in the field. I mean, I only paid a buck or two for the shirt. Um, so I just grabbed it. It was a good shape and so forth. Now, if I go to uh, the sh look at this full screen, I'm going to show you, and then I got to – there's – okay. Do you see the uh, Worth Point page now? Nope. We see you. Not yet. Love the page, Brian. <laughs> huh. Well, then I've already screwed this up. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Well, to all of our fans out there, too, uh, you can use Worth Point on the go. There's a Worth Point app. So yeah. even if you wanted to, you could you could see this while you're out and about. There, We can see it now, Brian. Right. So when I looked up on Worth Point after I got home, um, again, it's not the type of thing, uh, you know, it's pretty inexpensive uh, risk when you're buying st 